is a new Godzilla Minus One teaser floating around. It is a new official TV spot for Godzilla Minus One, and also there's a new clip for Godzilla Minus One that came out about a week ago, so I wanted to talk about that as well, but we're mostly focusing on the TV spot, and as per usual, it can't be helped. You somehow missed 45 things in it, so let's jump into what those things could be, and <laughs> let's get into this one. What's up everybody, D-Man back. Welcome to a brand new video. And today we're gonna to be doing another Godzilla Minus One breakdown video. In this one, we're gonna be diving headfirst into the newest Godzilla Minus One TV spot. And I just wanna run through it because there's a lot of fun, juicy details in here. Also, while I don't think these teasers were too spoiler heavy for Godzilla Minus One, I'll give a spoiler warning for the film because I don't know, maybe we're gonna cover some things that you didn't wanna hear about before the movie comes out. But I actually think these TV spots were lighter on spoilers than a lot of the stuff they've been releasing lately. I also know there's a series of advertisements that Doho has been posting recently featuring the actors of Minus One and then there's a bunch of new clips in those but I'm not really going to break all those down. That's for other times. Let's jump into this teaser here with Ikitsu looking out over the open waters as Godzilla erupts from the ocean to take down a similar special mission ship to the one he's on. This is aboard the Shinsei Maru during the investigation of the dead in the water ship at the start of the movie and the way Godzilla lunges out of the water here with the ship in mouth and then flips it underwater is horrifying. It also feels very animalistic, calling back the very gator-like movements of Godzilla, like the way he jumps out of the water to flip the tanker that Kong is being transported on in Godzilla vs. Kong. We then see all the naval soldiers aboard the Japanese cruiser Takao as it intercepts Godzilla here. They're sliding off the deck as the ship is being tilted, probably as Godzilla is climbing up onto it. And as stated in previous videos, the Takao is a real-life ship that was used by the Japanese Navy and was taken during the post-war disarmament period, but in minus one it has been supplied back to the Japanese so that they can fight Godzilla. This shot links back to the shot we've seen in previous TV spots of all the men running to the edge of the ship to look out over the open waters. And these two scenes with Godzilla attacking these two ships is done as a reference to the fact that in the original Godzilla from 1954, it starts out with a series of ship disasters and ships sinking at sea. Minus One just kind of draws upon these types of ship attacks and makes them into full-fledged sequences. We then see Tachibana listening through a radio and he is stationed at a naval base where he does maintenance on equipment that is used against Godzilla. Without Without giving too much away here, I want to say that this scene is very important, the broadcast he's listening to is incredibly important, and this is towards the very end of the movie. Pay attention very closely to his facial expression at the end of the clip as it kind of gives away the tone of the scene. We then see Noda and Akitsu standing in front of a naval vessel here, but the lighting doesn't match the shots of them on the actual ship itself, so this comes earlier in the movie when they're at the Yokosuka naval base. All the men here kind of agree in unison to take action, and then they go off to defend against Godzilla, who we have also seen in other teasers make landfall at the exact same naval base, so you can kind of put two and two together on what they're reacting to. The audio, which had started playing over the previous shot of the military general during their meeting, continues over this shot here, stating, Only we can save the future of this country. I've left this country to you. The next shot of Mizushima sees him wearing the same outfit we've seen him in in his press photo. This is a continuation of the stuff we saw in one of the previous TV spots, too. He's inside a ship here with lots of other boats sailing around outside the windows, which is a cool thing. Is one of the more exciting moments in Minus One when all those ships jump into action, and almost as if to pay respect to a fallen soldier, we see him take his hat off here in slow motion. This sequence actually links to the same sequence of Noda and Akitsu reacting in slow motion while on the ship that we talked about in one of the previous teasers as well. And like I said in that video, it is one of the more intense and dramatic sequences in the movie, and I loved it. The shot of Shikishima and Noriko here is extended from the countdown teaser, with it becoming clear now that Noriko is trying to rush Shikishima away from something. We then return to Noda, Akitsu, and the captain of the destroyer destroyer standing watching on in horror while Noda screams in fear and I believe what he's screaming is no! We then see an extended shot of Godzilla roaring well charred up. This is good stuff. This is the stuff that I speculated was going to follow the massive explosion in Tokyo with Godzilla's skin being burned and blackened and ripped open here with flaming burning chunks coming off of it. I love that you can see sparks crackling through his body itself. It is so cool. Godzilla has of course iconically caught on fire in films before back in the Showa era specifically when it was an actual physical 
actual suit that could catch on fire. And so seeing the detail here that Godzilla's skin can still catch on fire was pretty cool. Absolutely love this shot. I cannot get enough of it. The crown of spines on Godzilla's head, the burning wounds, the way he moves, it's all just so amazing to see. And then we end with this special little glimpse of Shikishima now in the cockpit of a plane. Shikishima was a pilot during the war, and as I've speculated in other videos, kind of takes on a Godzilla Raids Again type role. Tsukioka in that film was a pilot during the war, and as I've speculated for a long time now, Shikishima could probably do a similar thing to Tsukioka, which is get back into the cockpit later on after the war to take on the fight against Godzilla in the final act. I've also speculated for a long time now that Shikishima could suffer a similar fate to Kobayashi from Godzilla Raids Again, in which he has to sacrifice himself in his plane in some sort of kamikaze attack. The clouds in the background place Shikishima in the same setting as we have seen all the stuff with the Japanese destroyers in, which kind of explains why Shikishima has been absent from all of that action in these trailers is because he's not on any of those ships. The text on screen at the end here says, now showing the big hit, celebrating the success of Minus One in Japanese theaters, and the movie is a huge success. Leading into its American release, which will be subtitled, playing for a limited time it seems, starting on December 1st, and I believe running for about one to two weeks, depending on how well the movie's doing in your local theaters. We got a clip shared by Rotten Tomatoes showing an exclusive, basically 30 seconds of the movie, but it's a juicy 30 seconds, so I wanted to jump into it here. This sequence is actually my second favorite sequence in the entire film. I think it's truly incredible stuff and is filled with the raw horror and suspense that Godzilla has been lacking for so long. It is so incredible in so many different ways. It actually comes earlier in the film, which can be revealed here by the lack of Godzilla's cheek scar, which he iconically features during the Tokyo destruction sequence. This is more of a dire situation than we have literally ever seen our characters in in a Godzilla film before, out on the open waters with literally nowhere to run or turn to as Godzilla is hot on their trail. This is where it's at right here. They can't fly away. They can't run away. They can't hide behind a building. They are all by themselves in the middle of the ocean with Godzilla following behind them. And it's not like he sneak attacked them like he does with that other ship. That other ship had no suspense because they didn't know what kind of danger they were in. But here, Godzilla is hot on their trail. It is so scary. And Godzilla is actually rather slow in Godzilla Minus One as he struggles to catch up with the ship here. And I think the limitations to Godzilla's abilities completely benefit the character of Godzilla because it adds this level of suspense and tension. Additionally, because of it, Godzilla gets to almost toy with the people for a little longer as he tries to catch up with the ship, almost like a cat playing with its food. It's really spooky stuff. Godzilla swims in this super unnatural way with his head sticking out of the water and bobbling around like a bobblehead. And Godzilla has these super creepy eyes here locked on the ship with this strange smile across his face. It kind of reminds me of Pennywise from it, and it's probably the scariest we have ever seen Godzilla. I really love it. Godzilla's unnatural way of swimming also reflects how the minus one Godzilla represents represents what Godzilla was originally supposed to be and what I think some people have lost track of. Godzilla is an abomination. He's a tragedy. The MonsterVerse Godzilla is a sleek and powerful swimmer. He is very impressive and fast and thrives in the water as he should because the MonsterVerse Godzilla is a naturally occurring being. He evolved to be like this. The guy would be at a disadvantage if he wasn't able to catch up with ships. Minus One has returned Godzilla to being what he was originally supposed to be and that is an abomination who's not supposed to exist. He swims awkwardly and floats around weird with his head bobbling almost as if he just can't get it under the water properly. He's slower than the MonsterVerse Godzilla and is at a disadvantage the whole time. He reminds us of how Godzilla is a tragic being and always has been. His existence should be a shame and you should feel a little bad for him. I also like it when Godzilla has to overexert himself to get something done. That's good classic stuff dating all the way back to the 1954 film. This scene shows Mizushima and Noda attempting to bomb Godzilla using undersea mines. The Shinsei Maru, the ship they're on is a special ship that undertakes special post-war missions, including the handling of undersea mines, which explains why they have them on board in the first place. Unfortunately, it seems Godzilla has swallowed the bomb that they were trying to use against him and has severed the wire with his sharp teeth. I really love the way Godzilla bobs his head as he swims through the water. He goes up and down with it to gain momentum, much like a real swimmer. That's a great detail. And then we get this incredible shot that really left an impression on me during the movie and goes to show how amazing the special effects and CGI in Godzilla Minus One are, as we see the bomb rolling around Godzilla's mouth until it hits the vein-covered membrane between his lips. Everything about this shot, from the wet skin textures, to the lighting, to the way the bomb rolls around in his mouth, to the teeth, the grit, the grime on them, to the fleshy membrane with the veins in his mouth, it's all so stunning and realistic. I really think this is a perfect shot right here, and is one of the best, if not the best, realized shot we've ever seen of a close-up Godzilla face. Shikishima then screams for the men to take cover as he starts to take shots at Godzilla in hopes of blowing up the bomb in his mouth. Shikishima was a pilot during the war and as a result has the best aim on the ship. That's why he's on the gunner seat here. 
He's also spent months and months at this point blowing bombs out of the water on the Shinsei Maru, so this is something he has been training towards the entire film. The bullets ping off Godzilla's skin here, much like how they pinged off Shin Godzilla's skins, and I really love that. Shikishima having to shoot the bomb to explode Godzilla is a very similar setup to how the gang tries to explode King Kong when he's on that raft and he's all angry, but the TNT wire isn't working and so they have to shoot the mines in order to blow up the raft in the first place. That's all from King Kong vs. Godzilla, and while I do think that's a fun parallel, I don't think it was an intentional reference. Instead, I think this is most likely a reference to the movie Jaws. Director Takashi Yamazaki is a big fan of Steven Spielberg, and you can see that in the way this scene plays out, with the chase at sea feeling like it was pulled straight from that film. This is also a very similar setup to how in Jaws, during the film's finale, spoiler alert for Jaws, the shark eats an explosive barrel, and Sheriff Brody has to shoot it, causing it to explode in the shark's mouth, killing it. Keep in mind that Godzilla in Minus One can be harmed by conventional weapons, so he doesn't want the thing to explode in his mouth. That bomb is sure to do some sort of damage to him, wink wink. Finally, Shikishima hits the bomb, with this great detail showing the bullet ping off the bomb just before it goes off, causing it to explode in Godzilla's mouth, and that's where the clip ends. They shared such a brief clip from this movie, but my god, if it's not one of my favorite moments in the movie, and the little section that immediately follows this, the next stretch of the movie is so incredible. I really love it. It is such good stuff. I'm such a big fan. Standing Up D-Man returns to provide some additional Easter eggs I forgot to mention the first time, or things that you may have missed. We also see Akitsu's promo photo in action here, with him yelling back to the boys about shooting Godzilla on the ship. We now have context for that. The wire being snapped when Noda and Mizushima reel it in is reminiscent of the ending of the 1954 film, where they reel in the wire that Sarazawa was originally attached to, only to find it has been severed. There are some beautiful lens flares that go off as the bomb explodes in Godzilla's mouth. Just another wonderful detail that makes that whole scene feel so real, and I just want to say that's probably the most realistic CGI we've ever seen in a Godzilla movie. It's wonderful stuff. And finally, Shikishima seems to take a hit to the face here at the end of this clip, and maybe that's where he gets his head wound from, but I'll leave it at that. Alright, that's my time. I cannot wait for Minus One to come out. It's gonna come out in America in like a week. I cannot wait for it. I am so excited. I hope you guys are too. What do you think about all this? Comment below and let me know. <laughs> what are you most excited for in Godzilla Minus One? I want to hear what scenes are you most excited for, so comment those down below. I can't wait to see your guys' answers, and what are you most looking forward to seeing in this film? I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you for the support I get on the Patreon. It really goes a long way towards supporting the channel and making sure I can keep making videos like this for you guys. If you want to support the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below where you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man, out.